Okay guys, so how you doing? Today I'm going to show you a video on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro to create that cute little um, uh, photography effect that, that you just saw in the uh, video that I shot of young Tristan Young's, young Tristan Young, of her uh, uh, senior pictures. So it's a pretty easy project to do. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start this from scratch for you and show you exactly how to get it started and what to do with it. I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my Adobe Premiere and I usually work in iMovie. This is actually the first time I've ever worked in Adobe Premiere, so right, bear with me on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna go ahead and import okay, one of the three clips I've pose. got of Tristan Young and just I'm only pose. gonna work on one just to show you how the technique is. Pose. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you pose. Um, how this looks Throw your hair and pose. Uh, in the raw. So here we go. Watch good. It. Turn your head. Have a good time. Okay. Laugh. Giggle. This is fun, right? Okay, so Are as you see, fun? she didn't really good. know what she was doing. I was out there uh, shooting some video, here. just talking to her, getting her to move around, head. do this, do that. And from there that, you, you can take uh, that raw video. You can turn it into something that's kind okay, of cute and artsy and... And, and emulate your entire photo shoot. And that's what she really enjoyed was the fact that here she is. She's a senior. She's about to graduate. And, and she just wanted to get out and get some, create some memories. So that's what we did. So first thing I did was I went down. I right-clicked that clip. And I got rid of the audio from it. Because that was just horrible. So I've done that. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to just cut off the very front part because it was real choppy and it was where I was moving my camera around trying to get it set up, get it stabilized and stuff. So that's, that's unnecessary. So the next thing I'm going to do is right here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a picture of the very beginning of the frame and create a still frame and I'm going to call it Tristan 1. And I just used the little photograph icon up underneath the main viewing area and that takes a snapshot of whatever... Uh, the the uh, blue uh, viewing bar is on and I went ahead and I made a snapshot of the very beginning I called it Tristan 1 so now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna find the next snapshot the next picture that looks like or the next part of the video frame that looks like a good photograph and I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna take a snapshot of that I'm gonna call this Tristan 2 okay and the important thing to note here is after I take this um, photograph, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to get my little razor blade tool and I'm going to cut it right where I took that photograph. I'm going to just cut it. And it's important I do that because I'm going to put that photograph back in there where that cuts at. So I'm going to scan through <clears throat> I'm going to find the next one that I thought made would make an appealing uh, senior picture. And that's this one right here with the fountain in the background and you know Tristan kind of posing. I'm going to take a picture there and I'm going to call this Tristan too. Then I'm going to go on and do it, Tristan 3, Tristan 4, and so on. And the reason you want to label them like that is so that you can add them into your cuts here in a minute. And then you're going to utilize those still photos along with the cuts of your video to emulate the shutter snap of a camera and uh, give the, the illusion that someone is taking video in the middle of a photo shoot. It's a real simple technique. It's it's fun to do and, and the kids like it. You know, it, it's kind of cool and neat and, and adds something a little different to their to their senior senior experience, you know. So um I do this in iMovie a lot. This is again, let me just rephrase, this is the first time I've ever done this in Premiere Pro. So if I look a little shaky, it's because I'm a little shaky. I've never actually worked with this program before until today. This is my very first one. I just actually actually bought my first subscription for to uh, Adobe's Creative Crowds the Cloud. So I'll be I'll be working in um, with Adobe for the next year at least. I bought a year subscription. Um, so here we go. Alright. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna move my video clips over. I've cut them all. I've taken pictures or snapshots along the time frame and save those snapshots as one, two, three, and four. Coincidentally, I have four video clips, so each snapshot is going to coincide with each video clip. So I'm going to go down here to Tristan 1, and I'm going to pull it over onto the timeline. I'm going to set it on the timeline just above the video clip that corresponds with it. And as you can see, I'm going to stagger them. Okay, and then I'm going to go to Tristan 2, do the same thing, and right now I'm just moving them out of the way. Now, one thing I'd caution you about is when you're moving these video clips, because I've made this mistake a couple of times playing with this, is 
don't uh, don't change the uh, don't don't uh, collapse the clip in any way, shape, or form because it will get everything out of sync and it looks like hell if you do that. So I just pulled in Tristan number two and I staggered it at the rear of the first video clip. I'm going to pull the second video clip up that will correspond with that photograph. I'm going to pull Tristan three the photograph out and bring the other video clip that corresponds with it over. And now we're going to do Tristan 4 and the same thing. Very simple. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you uh, play it in your timeline. You've got a still frame that begins an animation and then that leads segues into another still frame that holds itself for five seconds and then segues into animation. Yet another still frame which holds its position for five seconds and then segues again into uh, animation. And it, it, it's a pretty neat effect. It, it gives the impression that, that the photo shoot is actually in progress. It's self-explanatory. You, you get it, I'm sure. But this is how you do it. This is how you create it. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time. I was, like I said, this is the first time I've ever worked with Premiere Pro, so I'm a little choppy. Love iMovie. I could I can do so much in iMovie, but I've from what I've read and from what I understand and and watching Peter McKinnon videos on YouTube, Premiere Pro is so much more powerful. There's so much more to it that you can unlock and, and do. And I I decided I just have to take the take the leap and delve into that uh, that realm of uh, videographic wonder. So. I am definitely taking part at this point. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just playing with uh, the, the timeline elements, trying to create a gap. I'm trying to just create that gap that I want to give me the illusion of a shutter, a camera shutter. Now what I've done in the past in uh, iMovie <clears throat> is used uh, a, a white transition screen, and actually, even in Premiere, I played with the strobe effect to create like a flash, a camera flash, to give the illusion of a picture being taken. And that worked okay. That really did work good. It's a lot of work to get everything fine-tuned and, and get it right. And what I found was a shortcut here in Premiere Pro that works really good. And, and again, I play with this a little bit until it finally dawns on me that I can just take my cutting tool and I can set my play line on each of those little photographs and I can cut just a sliver out of that with that cutting tool delete that sliver and it creates a shutter a shutter click works out great now, I, I sat here and jack around with this for a little bit um, <clears throat> to, to begin with but you'll see here in just a second what I'm talking about um, right now I'm trying to play with changing the size of the photographs and that would have worked okay. The problem I came out with, and I'll show you that here in just a second, is, is that the gaps were just too long. They were too big. So it looked like I was shooting in bulb mode. Um, yeah, it just it, it, it ruined the effect for me. Didn't work out. But see, let me show you what, what happened when I did that. I just uh, changed the size of my pictures. And even, even when I changed it to its smallest size, it still had my shutter hanging open for like three seconds. You know, just way too much. The shutters don't hang open that long. And everybody knows that, and it just ruined the visual effects. So watch, watch this right here, see? Yeah, way too long. Like a three-second shutter click. And that'd be fine if we were shooting at moon, in moonlight, but we're not shooting in the moonlight. So <clears throat> it doesn't, uh, doesn't make any sense. So anyway, so that didn't work out. This is one of my attempts that didn't work out. And this is one thing I would <clears throat> advise everybody. If you're playing with Photoshop, GIMP, um, Adobe Premiere, whatever you're playing with, Blender. If at first you don't succeed, keep trying. Keep trying. Eventually you can get what you're looking for. You just have to do a little problem solving and and uh, and figuring and 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 and, and work around uh, ways to make it work for you. So don't give up. Don't ever give up. All right. So. As you can see, I tried one thing, it didn't work out. So now I'm trying to use um, 
or I end up trying to use this other uh, tool over here, and I don't really know what it is, the ripple edit tool. I just wanted to see what it did. And I found out that for me, it didn't do anything. I, uh, I applied it, and I haven't done any research on it, I haven't studied, haven't read anything. I'll find out what that ripple edit tool is for. But it ain't for what I was trying to use it for, because as you can see right here, when I applied the ripple edit tool, it didn't do anything. And that's fine. It was something I tried. I like to uh, learn by doing. I don't really like classroom environments so much. And I feel like any program like this, they've put the buttons and the tools there for you to use. If you don't like what happened, just hit Control Z. And if that doesn't fix it, hell, just start all over. It's all a learning process. So as you can see, that didn't work. So finally, I get smart and I go and I get my cutting tool. Now, I'm trying to use the cutting tool in and of itself and it didn't work like this either. What I found I had to do was, was drag my play bar over the, the, uh, the blue vertical bar. And once I lined the play bar up, then the play bar would allow me to place where I wanted my cuts to be made. So I lined my play bar up, lined my cutting tool up with a voila. I cut just a sliver off of that thing. And I did that on all three of them. Now, I've got four photographs up, but the first, first one doesn't really need to be uh, clicked into the scene because it's the very first photograph. And the effect is basically that of a still photo that suddenly becomes animated. And I, I like the way that works out. So here I am cutting those little slivers out that I had cut loose. And now you're going to see uh, a wonderful um, emulation of uh, shutter, shutter closes, shutter snaps. Uh, you don't hear anything because I haven't put any audio to it yet, but you're going you're gonna to see wonderful. Watch, look at that. Click. Yep, looks perfect. I love that. I love that effect. So I'm very happy. Uh, I, I was able to do it in Premiere Pro just as well as I could do it in uh, iMovie. <clears throat> in iMovie, <clears throat> I actually never used this technique. I always used just a, a very brief uh, white transition screen, just like a, a tenth of a second. But, and it emulated a flash. I like this better. I like the, the shutter click emulation better than I do the flash because to me it just it, it's more realistic in photography because I wasn't using a flash here. I wouldn't have needed a flash here. Maybe in a lower light condition where I didn't need a flash, I might have liked that better. I don't know. We'll see. I'll play around with it sometime. So now I'm going to import the um, uh, audio file that I've saved in my downloads of a, a camera click. That's just to coincide with the um, uh, clicks that I have cut into this timeline. And I'm going to drag them out here. And what's important to note is that <clears throat> when you put your clicks in, put them to the edge of the um, photograph, not to the end of the preceding video clip. And the reason you do that is it, it throws the click off from the clip. And if you look at the yellow line up above, you'll see that there's gaps where those um, shutter clicks are going to be. Always put your audio to the far end of the gap up against where the picture actually starts. Because otherwise you've got a click, you've got a little bit of a gap, and then you've got a picture and it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work as good. Just something I learned through trial and error. Let me make that mistake for you. <coughs> and then if you look, you'll see I threw one of the audio clips down in the wrong uh, channel. That's, I'll, I'll change it. Yep, everything works out good. I like that effect. I like the way it looks. So I'm going to move this back to where it goes. It's supposed to be. Again, make sure you line it up with the uh, edge of the photo, not the edge of the video in front of it, so that you have that gap. And now, all I need to do, I'm going to check this and make sure it works well, which it does. It works fine. So now all I need to do is incorporate the audio that young Tristan had decided she wanted for her uh, senior video. This uh, song by Christina somebody. 
Christina Perry, A Thousand Years. It's not my type of music. But I found it for young Tristan because that's what she wanted. And we will pull this in. Now one thing I did notice about this music, and I would recommend, it's got some lyrics or some um, instrumentals at the beginning. And the lyrics start you know, 10, 15 seconds into it. As a, as a general rule, I, I generally like to trim, trim that uh, opening, uh, I don't know what you would call it, stanza off that opening piece and just start with the lyrics just because it creates a better effect, I think. So I'm going to let this play till the lyrics start. And I'm going to back it off about a half a second and I'm going to trim the, the, the instrumentals off so that her video starts with the lyrics from the song. And then now I'm going to go through and cut that out. And then I'm going to drag the remaining um, audio over to the beginning of the video clip. And then and and this is it. That's the whole technique, guys. That's all it takes to create that that effect of being in the midst of a photo shoot. Okay, that's my video. That's uh, how I did this. I hope this is helpful to you. I hope uh, somebody can find use for it. It's, it's a neat little effect. Kids like it. This is creating memories, guys. So get in there, get your hands dirty, and, and, and make yourself some videos. This is Scott Smith. I'm signing out. And if you like this, hit the like button. Don't be afraid to subscribe. And I hope you have a great day.